Welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to set up key bindings and shortcuts. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up a bus compressor on the master bus of our project. Now, there's two schools of thought about bus compression, whether to put it on at the beginning of the project or at the end of the project. End of the project means that you'll hear the difference the compressor is making immediately compared to your existing mix. In the beginning of the project, every single mix decision you make will be built around the sound you're hearing. We generally put it on at the beginning of the mix and mix into it. We're gonna start by going up to the inserts tab of the master bus. Now Cubase doesn't have its own dedicated mix bus compressor, but it does have some great analog and tube emulations. So we are gonna choose one of those. We're gonna go up to our insert effects and scroll down to dynamics, and we're gonna choose the tube compressor. This is a really nice recreation of some of the analog compressors of the day, like the Tektronix LA-2A. It imparts a lot of great analog, vintage, and opto vibe to it. Great for gluing stuff together, and it works great in a pinch for a bus compressor. We're gonna navigate up to our presets window and scroll down and choose the preset AM Master Bus. Bus compressors are a pretty specialized tool and there's a lot of great ones out there from the Fairchild 670 to the Focusrite FG Red and the SSL G series. These are all great bus compressors and by all means, if you have access to these, you wanna use them for sure. But we want to stick to just Cubase effects for this demonstration. So for the time being, we're gonna use Steinberg's tube compressor. And the next thing we're gonna add on our two bus is a limiter. We're gonna come down to the same dynamics tab, scroll down to the limiter, and you notice that we're not using the brick wall limiter on this, we're just using the limiter by itself. We're gonna roll this back to about 0.3 dB. And what this is gonna do is work as a safety valve. It's really just gonna keep our signals from going above a certain amount, but it's not gonna slam them like a brick wall limiter would do. We're gonna leave that up to the mastering engineers. We just want a couple of things on our two bus to start with to help smooth things out and make sure that we're not going into overs or clipping our master bus. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna make sure that our mix knob is set at 100%. We wanna hear 100% of what the tube compressor is actually doing to the mix. And we're gonna to navigate to the loudest part of our song and that's gonna help us set the overall levels at the part of the song that has the most amount of energy. So let's play it back. And we want to set our input knob so that we're getting about two to four dB of reduction. We don't want much more than that. We really just want to use this to help glue the mix together and make it sound more finished and more polished. So we're going to raise the input knob until we start to see that needle move a little bit. Now if we set it too far to the right, you can see it's going to take it way too far down. We don't want anywhere near that much compression. We want to stay right between two and four dB. And right about there is going to be really a perfect starting point for it. Back it up just a hair when that male vocal comes in. We want to leave ourselves a little bit of headroom here. And the reason why is that as we add EQs and compressors and other effects to the mix and we add all those channels together, all those channels are gonna hit the two bus harder. And we wanna make sure that we leave some headroom for that to happen. Now we've taken some audio reduction here, two to four dB. We need to use the output knob to make up that amount. So we're gonna open the limiter and put it side by side right here to the compressor and play it back. Now our limiter we had set at about 0.3 dB or minus 0.3 dB. And we're gonna raise this up to make up that lost level that our and compressor is taking. Having the limiter side by side to the compressor during the loudest part of our mixes allows us to keep an eye on it, make sure we're not overdriving anything. We wanna make sure that we're not hitting the gain reduction knob here on the limiter very much, just at the very, very, very hottest peaks. We're gonna leave the character knob where it is and the drive knob. The drive knob can actually add or impart a little bit of tube emulation. It's gonna be driving a tube circuit into your mix. Let's hear what that sounds like. That I might be gone long, long and you can actually hear it start to distort as we crank that up. So we don't want it cranked into distortion, but a little and bit of only... this can add a bit of grit or warmth to your mix. So if your mix genre calls for that, then you might want to experiment with that. We're going to leave the character knob like we said where it is. We're going to leave the ratio knob where it is. We're going to leave the attack knob where it is because it's going to start working right away. We're going to leave the release knob in the auto position. The sidechain features we're not going to be using on the master bus for now, but we'll get more into that later. 
And this is a great starting point for what we're going to be putting on the master bus and our master bus compressor. To sum up, we added Steinberg's tube compressor to our master bus and we navigated up to the presets window and chose the master bus preset. Then we added a limiter directly under the compressor and we set its output to minus 0.3 dB or about a third of a dB to act as a safety valve. Once our limiter was set, we went back to our compressor and we set its mix knob for 100%. Then we navigated to the loudest part of our song and we set our input knob so that it drove the compressor to a maximum of between minus two and minus four dB of total reduction. And finally, we used the compressor's output knob to make up for the drop in level. That's it for our master bus settings. We'll see you guys in the next video.